Yeah, it's a uh, it's pretty traumatic video, man. It's uh, that it was tough, tough, uh, tough to watch, and seeing the results uh, and what it's created across our country. Really appreciate the outpouring of love you see from people um, and the passion that people are showing, the empathy as well. Uh, but it seems like it could very well be a watershed moment for our country. Definitely gotten a lot of people's attention like, like never before. Uh, but very, very hard to watch, for sure. And, and Leslie, especially as, as a black man in a position of power, what kind of role do you think you have? What, what do you think you can be for so many of, of your players who are, you know, who, like Sean said the other day, that this is hitting so close to home for? Yeah, you know, Marcel, when I talk with our players, I just, um, just express to them the importance of finding out what can I do to make things better. It's so easy to point to what the problem is. But what can I, as an individual, do to make things better? What responsibility can I take? And hopefully, this will galvanize our players and other players within our communities, whether it's in Buffalo or wherever you're from, to get down to the grassroots level, man, and use your platform to make a difference. Obviously, there's some injustice that has gone on, uh, but there's an opportunity that we have as pro athletes, as coaches, that we can make a, a tremendous impact because of this pedestal that we have. And our voice needs to be heard and be involved, not sit back and wait on others to be the initiators of change. We, we need to be involved. And it, it just, I talked to him about really what we spoke at the comment that my uh, quote that Muhammad Gandhi made you know, the change you want to see in this world that can be us uh, because of the platform that we have as athletes. And um, hopefully, our guys will, will get involved and we'll stick together as a, as a group and make a difference uh, in, this, in this time. Thank you, Leslie. Hey, Leslie, Sal Capaccio, WGR. Great to see you. I'm here, Sal. Um, before I get to a more serious question, are you on the IR? You were on the Bills Embedded series. You had a sling on your left arm. Are, are, you, are you going on the IR? No, no IR. <laughs> a little, little cleanup work done on my shoulder, but I'm good. All good. Okay. Yeah. Um, you talked about your team coming together. And I know what you said about, you know, the team and the players and coaches and people in leadership, you know, using platforms. But after seeing what's happened also – in the locker room in New Orleans after Drew Brees yesterday, even today with Jake having to release a statement because of the text message that was released. You know, how, how do you go about making sure that, you know, um, everybody in the locker room, no matter who they are, where they come from, what they look like, um, that they can go forward together and this does not become divisive. Uh, how, how do you take those steps as uh, especially an African-American man in a position of leadership? Yeah, we, we, we kind of address that as well, so with our guys today. Uh, and it's so important that we all educate ourselves on the things that are going on in our world and our culture today. And then the other part of it is the communication, uh, making sure that we're communicating across racial lines. And we think that's extremely important. And, um, and that's something we, we wanted to make sure that we hammered home. We don't want to be a team that becomes fractured over what's going on uh, in the world today. And it could easily happen uh, where your locker room is split because of comments or things that are, that are happening around the world. So we really emphasize educating ourselves, whether you're in the majority or the minority, as well as making sure those lines of communication are open. And if someone has a concern, I mean, bring it up. Let's talk about it, man. We're, we're supposed to be in this as one. And if we can't talk about issues, without feeling like, uh, you know, I feel uncomfortable doing it. Well, let's take that out of it. Let's do what we think is the right thing to do to help us to be a team and to be unified. Because this is something that we need to be unified around. We may have some differences of opinion in, in some areas, but this is one area where we need to be unified as a group and make sure that we're all fighting the same fight. And I think our guys get that message and time will tell.
Hey, Leslie, Heather Prusak here from WIVB. Thank you so much for taking the time to do this. I hope you're staying safe and healthy as well as your family. Um, going along the lines of being unified and having that communication with your players, um, kind of a two-part question. One, how do you see the conversations um, amongst the team going right now? Are guys, you know, uh, receptive to listening? How, how are guys responding? Do you see any kind of, of divide? And then also, what actions do you think, you know, players and coaches and as a team, um, you know, specifically, at what actions do you think as a team you guys can do um, to, to help the cause and to help end, um, you know, racial injustices? Yeah, and good, good, good questions, uh, Heather. Um, you know, our players throughout this week, at times we've gotten away from the X's and O's to let them in their small group meetings talk about girl events. And that sometimes can really be a good moment because guys get a chance to share their thoughts and hear from their teammates as well. So we've had some moments like that to make sure that we're all communicating and let guys voice their frustrations and, and also talk about ways that we can make things better. And one of the ways that we can make things better, and this is something we talked about earlier today, within our communities, and, and our guys are all spread out, they're all in different places right now. I mean, we, we, can, we can volunteer, we can donate funds, uh, a lot of things that we can do to make a difference. And I'll go back to the platform that we have. And I, one of the things I've pointed out to our guys, if, if a Jordan Poirier or to Davis White came to my middle school, or my elementary school, and just showed up and, and, and just said hello, or came to my playground, man, that would have taken me to a whole nother level because those are my heroes, you know? Uh, so for our guys to get involved in their communities, in communities and the same thing here in Buffalo, I talk, we talked to them about when they come back to Buffalo, making sure that we get intertwined in the community and we have a social justice committee uh, on our team. I mean, uh, Harrison Fuller talked to guys about that today on the call and just invited other guys to get involved. Uh, but so you don't want to just be a person who's spewing uh, you know, negatives. Uh, you know, there, there are some solutions as well. There, I mean, you, if you want to see change, you got to get involved. You don't, you don't want to just stand around and just talk about what the problem is. And that's what we try to stress to our guys. Don't just, don't be one of those people. There, are, we got enough of those. Let's get involved. Let's, let's affect change. And we have the platform to be able to do it. Thanks, Ali. Leslie, so great again to uh, to see you and have a chance to visit with you. And and I know everyone agrees that it's great to uh, that you're taking the time, as Coach McDermott did, to do this. It's so helpful uh, to all of us. Um, so I got a, a first question, and then I have a follow up. But the first question to you is, um, how much of your own experiences, life experiences, you were a player, uh, you've been a coach in this league for a long time. Uh, all of those together, can you have you utilized, if at all, in your discussions with some of the younger players who, if anything, are trying to, you know, find answers and some guidance, perhaps, uh, and, and just sharing what your personal experiences have been with, you know, going through a, a long stretch uh, of life uh, with the, the uh, uh, sadly, these issues recurring. So how much of that has come up in conversations either in these meetings or private meet, you know, separate meetings, whatever. Yeah, Vic, I, uh, I've gotten a, a lot of calls throughout the week from colleagues in the league, uh, some Caucasian just asking me, hey, just talk to me about this, some of the things you've experienced, because for some, it's been an eye opener, seeing that video of George Floyd, uh, like no other. And even today with our team, uh, with our guys on defense, I shared a, a moment where, you know, as a player, I'm in a shopping center near where my home is in the suburbs of Chicago at the time. And police comes up to me, uh, asks for my ID. I'm, you know, I'm just walking in the mall. I, in my mind, not doing anything wrong. 
and uh, showing my ID. He asked me, why, why am I in the mall? Why am I walking around in the mall? Moments like those that some of our players have experienced. And pulled over for no particular reason. But I wanted to share with them uh, a real moment for me so that they could understand some of the things that they're facing, some of the things they're seeing. And we've experienced it as well. Uh, but there's a way to, to, to handle it. Uh, you can become better and just uh, live, live the rest of your life that way, being bitter, angry, and ready to stop at, at anyone that, that's, that doesn't look like you. And you can say, what can I do to make the situation better? And that's what we're trying to do with our players today, just trying to evoke thought and the action, what can I do to make the situation better? Uh, there's no question. I've been, and there's some other situations I could share, but that was one that I wanted to share with our players. And, and as soon as the policeman recognized who I was after seeing my ID and seeing my name, the conversation completely changed. Because he's a Bears fan, and you know, it just completely flipped. But if I had just been Leslie Frazier, Citizen 8, you know, who knows where that conversation would have gone. But that's the platform that athletics gives you. It kind of insulates you from some of the stuff that goes on, but it's around you. And you know, I wanted our guys to understand they have a golden opportunity at this moment to use the pedestal of the platform that they have to get involved and to make a difference in their own way. And they can do it. They can do it. And they're all leaders, and, and it does take some courage. Um, but this is the time, if there's ever a time, to step up and get involved. That's powerful. Um, so my follow-up uh, was um, you, as a, the conversation about coaching. And there's been, as you know, as, I mean, you know better than I'll ever know, the, the conversation about um, whether there is fairness, equity, efforts to try to make it so. And as you well know, the league, or, or it's been discussed at least about some level of um, reward or, or incentive, I guess is the better word, to hire minority candidates for these jobs, coaches, uh, front office. Uh, what, what is your perspective, Leslie, on, on that, on that conversation that's going on and, and any thoughts as to uh, how, how it can be improved? Yeah, you know, Vic, uh, and prior to the pandemic, you know, we were all at the combine. I had a chance at the invitation of the league to speak to the Workplace Diversity Committee about minority hiring practices. And it was a, you know, a strong conversation uh, amongst other owners and, and some of the people that were involved. And, I had a chance to speak to that committee because they, they have tremendous influence uh, when it comes to uh, minority hiring in our league. And to see some of the changes that, that they're talking about and maybe implement, uh, well, where it will go, but at least they're having the conversations. And there are some changes. I think the, the, the one about coordinators being able to, not only coordinators, but position coaches being able to interview without being blocked. And I think that's a, a, a great thing for a lot of young coaches who aspire to advance in the profession. Uh, but I think with the, with the commissioner, along with the Chris Pollard Alliance, and along with many others in the league, are trying to do uh, it's, it's necessary. To what degree, I don't know. I don't know what, what the end game is going to be, what the end, end game is going to be, what things are going to be made. But the fact that they're having a conversation they recognize that something is wrong with the current system and they want to make corrections. And we'll see where it leads. Thank you very much. Hey, Leslie, sorry to interject here quickly. Your uh, answers have sounded a little bit muffled on a couple of these uh, questions. Okay. So can you just try to adjust your surface a little bit? And hopefully that'll fix it. All right, Adam, go ahead. Hi, right, Leslie. Uh, thanks again for taking the time to uh, to do this. Uh, I, you've you've touched on this before, 
But, you know, your overall reaction, I guess, uh, to the reaction around the league coming out of Drew Brees' comments, um, I don't know, Jake came to the surface today, but when you see the, the number of players tweet, react to it, uh, does that speak to the opportunity that you've referenced uh, prior in this conversation? Yeah, I, I, th I think so. Uh, I mean, this is obviously a subject that has galvanized our, our country in, in, in so many ways. Uh, but it's a, as I mentioned earlier, I think it's a great opportunity for our players, for our, just anybody in, in, in our country uh, to get on the right side of this and really begin to affect change in a positive way. Um, I saw where Drew made the apology about the marks and hopefully for their team to be able to come together and stay, stay together and rally around uh, Drew as a teammate. Hopefully that'll be the case. Thank you. Hey, Coach, good to see you. Um, thanks for taking time here today. In your first comment, Coach, you said you think this could be a watershed moment. What convinces you that this is different from, unfortunately, so many other similar examples in the past? Just uh, seeing the, 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 the reaction throughout our country. I got an I got a email today, Chris, from a former GM in our league, uh, who just really poured his heart out about his activity with recognizing what some of the issues were. And the videotape of George Floyd's death really brought it home to him. And he was very apologetic for the fact that he has not been as involved as he should have been in the past, just over the course of his, his life. And he said, I want to apologize to all my friends and make you aware that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do better. I'm going to do better. I'm going to be more involved, and I'm going to use the voice that I have and the influence that I have much more so than I ever had before and make a difference. And when you hear comments like that, and there have been many others, you get, the, you get the feeling that maybe this is the time in our country where you know, we're gonna take some necessary steps to make things better as a whole, but only time will tell, but it's just so, seems. Yeah, so the feedback you're getting kind of leads you to believe that maybe now more than ever, the white community is is really realizing how much they've failed the black community. Is that kind of what, what you're getting at? Standard? Yeah, you, what, what, what you what you sense is that for the for more so than at any other time, that our country as a whole, we're recognizing uh, social injustice much more so than we have in the past. It just seems that way. There, there seems to be more people recognizing what has been going on historically uh, in our country, uh, just by some of the comments and some of the actions of our citizens. Thanks, Coach. Hey, Coach, I want to talk about the virtual offseason a little bit. Quite a few new players uh, on this defense, the defensive line, uh, A.J. Epinesa, Dane Jackson, some, some rookies entering the defense. How have you seen these new players reach out to some of the, the players who are on the roster from last year or, you know, the veterans in the room reaching out to the new players just in this time where it's virtual, these guys don't get to see each other in person and, and to kind of meet people for the first time virtually, how have you seen that take place? I guess, what have you thought of your defense in doing that? Yeah. Thanks, Maddie. Uh, one of the things that Sean did in one of our very first uh, group meetings with everybody after the draft, was make sure that the veterans had some of the rookies' phone numbers and vice versa. The rookies had some of the veterans' phone numbers at their position. And, and guys have crossed over. I mean, they, they're, they're communicating with the young guys. The young guys are talking to the veterans, and they're developing that bond uh, that, that we would ordinarily be developing at, at Archer Park, uh, trying to develop that chemistry that's necessary to pull your team together. But 
they're, upon, they're taking it upon themselves to reach out to each other, communicate, talk, and you know that's that's what the way we have to do it now because we can't be around one another. But they're doing it. They're they're communicating. They're getting to know each other uh, virtually and through phone calls. Thanks, Coach. Hi, hey, Leslie. Jay Skursky with the Buffalo News. Um, what specifically did Jake Fromm have to say to the team today, and what was your reaction both to uh, what he said and then your reaction to uh, what I'm assuming was his apology? Yeah, you know, he, yeah, that's exactly what it was, Jay. It was an apology. But I, I did, up until the apology, I had no idea uh, anything had happened. I didn't know anything about it. And I still don't know all the details other than what he shared with us uh, in, our, in our team meeting. Uh, so I'm still learning more about it but that's what it was it was an apology by him and what was the reaction amongst the team and yourself to that well you know on on, on zoom it's hard sometimes to sense what people's reactions are uh and so, as you guys probably know from from doing these calls uh so but i i think we have a, a, a mature enough team that our leaders are going to reach out to him and encourage him and and uh and and, and they recognize uh, how sincere he was in his apology. And I think we would definitely be able to move on from that. And then if I could, just a, a follow, a football follow-up question. Losing Lorenzo and losing Kyle in back-to-back -back years, that's a lot of leadership walking out of the room. Who have you seen step up to start to replace some of that leadership that you've lost? Well, the, the first guy that comes to mind is just seeing uh, Tremaine's development uh, in this offseason, uh, this virtual offseason, just the way – he has been kind of bringing players together and talking with them, calling them, reaching out to them, going past his own position, the linebacker's position. And the same thing with Jordan Poirier, the same thing with Jerry Hughes, reaching out to her teammates to try to develop that unity that we're missing right now because we're not around one another. So those guys really come to mind as guys that are reaching out across their position lines and you know trying to help the young guys as well as the veterans to stay connected. Thank you, Leslie. Hey, Leslie, Sal Mayorana in Rochester. Um, I, I wanted to follow on Jay's question about the Jake Fromm thing. I know you're a little bit in the dark about it, but you do have a strong culture in that locker room. But is that exactly the kind of thing, Leslie, that, you know, you need, we need to get past that? I mean, he came out and apologized for it, which is great, but he still said it at some point. Is this the kind of thing that we have to eradicate if we're ever going to move forward? Yeah, I mean, Jay, uh, you know, Jake was very, uh, uh, he seemed very sincere in his apology. And I think for our team, he mentioned it, we have a strong culture on our team. Those guys are going to be able to sift through what's real and what's not real. And it sure does seem, we, we haven't been around Jake. We haven't, we haven't had a chance to spend much time with him because of the virtual offseason that we're in. But uh, he's a teammate. Those guys, I think over time, will, will gain their trust. And for all of us, you know, we, we make some mistakes. And he acknowledged that I made a mistake. And there are a number of us uh, that, that could say the same thing at some point or another, especially in our youth, we made some mistakes. And then you move on from it and you grow from it. And that's what we're going to try to do, I'm sure, as a team, grow from it. I know Jake wants to grow from it as well. And if I could ask you a follow-up on the defense, how excited are you about the depth you have on the, on the defensive line? It seems like you've got guys that can really move around, and you, you go probably one through eight right now up front. How excited are you about that segment of the defense? You know, Sal, I'm excited on paper. I can't wait till we get on the field, man, and uh, get a chance to see the guys move around and you know, just, you know, execute some of the things that we're, we're talking about uh, in these Zoom meetings. And, you know, good about it on paper. I think Brandon did a good job uh, in, in getting some guys signed that can help us. Uh, now we need to be able to get on the field and try to come together as a unit. We have a new D-line coach, Eric Washington, with his assistant being Jock Shazir. Uh, Eric is an outstanding D-line coach. He's going to do a great job for us. I'm very happy that he's going to be leading that group. Uh, but we, we need to be able to get on the field to bring it all together. Thanks. Hey, Leslie, John Warrell with a beard. I'm not sure if you can recognize me, but here you go. 
hope all is well and thanks for doing this and uh, thanks for uh, speaking out on what's an important, uh, very important issue at this time. Um, I'm gonna stick it to, I'm gonna stay with football at this point, but we, we, there's a report out there that the coaches are, the coaches can now get back, return to their facility. Um, is that the plan for, for you and, and, and Sean's staff uh, for tomorrow? Uh, can you update us on that? And, how, and if so, how big might that be finally? Yeah, I'm sure at some point Sean will reach out to us as a staff and we'll we've been talking about a bunch of different scenarios. And uh, now that that news has become public, uh, Sean will get with us and give us some direction on how we want to handle it. We have some contingencies in place and you know, we'll, we'll come together and we'll talk about it. And just as a follow-up, uh, I mean, you, you, no one knows when training camp or, or when you can get back on the field will be. How much do you reflect back to the lockout, uh, to, like to the lockout off season? Um, what was it? I believe it was 2011. And how important is it to have a group of defensive players who are either are entering the third year or second year in, in this defensive system or are newcomers who are very familiar with how it works and familiar with a guy like Eric Washington? Yeah, I, 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 it's, 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 it's the same in some ways as 2011, but it's, a, it's far different in a lot of other ways. The fact that we can communicate with the players, whereas in 2011, man, you were slapped on the wrist if you tried to communicate with a player. So this is, uh, this is if there is a better, this is better than, the, than it was back in 2011, especially if you were a new staff. And fortunately for us, as you mentioned, we've been together uh, as a staff now for the last three years, going to our fourth season. And having a, an addition like a guy, a veteran guy like Eric is a plus for us on defense. Uh, the majority of our defense players are coming back. So you feel like you're a little bit ahead of the curve. But in, when, you, when, you, when we come out of this virtual period, John, it'll be a matter of you know, how we organized and take advantage of every single day that we have because we've got so much ground to cover on the field. Until you get on the field, you really don't know what you have and, uh, and start competing. So I think we've, we've done a great job with the off-season program under the current circumstance, but we need to get on the field. But there's no question the fact that we've been together for the last three years is a plus for us as, as we, get, we go forward. Thanks and good. Hope, hope to see you personal, uh, in person soon. Thank you. Hey, Leslie, it's uh, Josh Reed with the CBS station here in Buffalo. It's great to see you. Thanks so much for taking the time and addressing uh, everything that's going on in the world right now. Um, Sean McDermott has talked over and over again about how much he appreciates having you as a sounding board. Um, I can only assume, and we had a chance to talk to him a little bit yesterday, and he brought up how even keel you are and how much that helps him. How have you been able to help Sean uh, navigate these waters? Because – we all see this through a different lens, and, and your lens is probably is as important as anybody's. Yeah, you know, uh, Josh, I, I give Sean a lot of credit. You know, we, we've been, we talk almost every day about our team and what, what, what's going on in the world and how it affects our team. And I just appreciate his heart, man, his willingness to listen and, and that we can have hard conversations and, and come to agreements. And we don't always agree, for, for sure, but we listen to one another and that I'm just very, very thankful uh, for him in that way. Cause these moments, these are, these are life changing moments that we're experiencing. And, uh, and, and it's hard to just say my way is the only way it's, it's, you need to be able to listen sometimes. And he, he does. And I think that has a lot to do with our culture of being as strong as it is. It's willingness to have an open heart and, and, to, and to listen. And, you know, it's important, and I and I, I appreciate him, and, and and hopefully as we go forward and deal with all the different things that that we'll face, uh, that dialogue will continue. And I have no reason to believe it would. Leslie, one quick follow up: Have you are there one or two players that you've seen since this has started to kind of unfold, step to the forefront, and and really take on the reins of hey, you know this is this is how we need to speak on this. You, you, are you talking? Are you referencing Josh? What's going on this week? Or are you talking about just the, the off-season program? Yeah, what's been going on across the country this week uh, with the Floyd stuff? Is there is there one or two guys in that locker room? Because it's still a pretty young team. As we talked yeah. about, you know, with Lorenzo leaving, you know, are there one or two guys that you can point to that you've been very impressed? 
Yeah, I don't know if there's a guy who would uh, fill Lorenzo's shoes. There's no question that in a moment like a moment like this, uh, he he would be out in front for sure. And um, I don't know if we have have anyone who stepped up to that point yet. But within their groups, we've got guys that are leading. Uh, a reference and you know, what Jordan Poirier is doing, what Tremaine is doing, what Jerry Hughes is doing. Uh, Lorenzo, I mean, he was affecting the whole team, uh, not just one side of the ball. So uh, he, he, that's a hard one to live up to. But we got some guys that are definitely leading us in the right direction within their groups. Thanks again. No problem. Yes, so good afternoon, uh, Coach Frazier. George Radney, Challenger Community News. West New York's largest weekly African-American newspaper. Uh, glad to get a chance to ask you a couple questions. Uh, one, uh, on the Jake Fromm incident, I was just looking at it online here, and some of his Georgia teammates, uh, two of the players mentioned that they couldn't believe it and that they lost all respect, total respect for him and uh, Drew Brees. And, they all, and one gentleman even mentioned, said, it seems like this whole situation is allowing everyone's true side to come out. And I'm just wondering, in this situation where you don't have the players in the, in the in person, you don't get to see them until almost July. It seems like every day something is, is coming out and with the players. And how do you guys as coaches, New McDermott and the rest of the coaching staff are, are prepared to handle uh, these situations as they continue to uh, be espoused by, uh, by various players uh, throughout the league, number one. And number two, my second question is, uh, what was your impression when you first heard about Vic Faggio saying there's no racism in the NFL? Hmm. So would you, would you, with the first question uh, regarding Jake, you know, uh, uh, Faz, as I mentioned earlier, you know, we're still getting to know Jake as a teammate. You know, we have been in the locker room together, but uh, based on what he said to the team today, I know, our, I really believe our guys will give him the benefit of the doubt. And they're, they're looking forward to communicating with him and encouraging him. And, and it definitely sounds like he learned from his mistake. One of the things we talked about in our meeting earlier, George, was the fact that love has to overcome hate. I mean, it's easy to just continue down that, that hate, hate, hate road, but that's not what we want to be. You know, we, if we want to we we change this, there has to be a reciprocal effort on both sides. And we have enough guys on our team that want us to change for the better. And, uh, I know those guys are going to give Jake every chance to prove that those words that were echoed, I don't know how long ago it was, uh, that was a that was a, a, a teachable moment for, for Jake and that he's learned from it and he's growing uh, from that moment. Uh, so I, 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 and I know our players are going to reach out to him in the next 24 to 48 hours as well. Uh, in regards to what uh, Big Fangio said, I think he apologized for those comments. Uh, no racism in the, in the league. Uh, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad that he that he apologized. That's that's a good thing. Yes, because Leslie, he, he uh, said he apologized today because his players brought it to his attention about the various issues of uh, black coaches, head coaches, front office positions. Uh, they, and, and they, it seemed like the players let them know. I'm just shocked. Like, where, where have you been, uh, Vic, Coach Vic? Where, where has this guy been if he didn't know that there is no racism in the NFL? So that goes back to, uh, I think Sal pointed out when he asked me the question, do you, you know, what makes you think this could be a watershed moment? I mean, moments like these, these are eye openers uh, for, for us all. Uh, in the past, it may have been a segment of the – of the population that was looking at this and seeing it for what it what it really was. Now it seems more and more people are, are are really having the shields taken off of their eyes and seeing things for what they really are. And uh, thankfully, uh, you know, the, the coach listened to his players because this goes back to what we were talking about earlier: the communication. Because in our business, George, it, it's so much of it is relation and building relationships. And you know, we try to value our players as more than just assets in, in Buffalo. We really do our best to see our guys become great men in the community and develop them as people outside of football because at some point football is going to end. And you don't want to just value people because they are an, an asset, but 
for their for who they are as people. And that's what we're trying to do, build relationships with our players. And I think you see that in our culture, and I think you see that in the way our players play as well. And that's a credit to our head coach also. Great. Thank you very much, Coach. Yes, sir. Leslie, it's Kim Jones from NFL Network. How are you? Good, good. Good to see you. Good. I have a two-part question, if I may. And I'm wondering, I'm struck by the watershed moment you've gone back to a couple times and also the, the shopping center. And I'm just wondering, as you relayed that, especially the specifics of the shopping mall to your players, did you sense them exhaling at all and then maybe opening themselves up to share some things? Because I think when we can identify with other people, we just feel more relaxed in then being our true selves and sharing ourselves. So that's the context in which I asked that. Yeah. And I know it's only June, but I also wonder if you think very much this fall, the teams that, I don't want to say wins and losses success necessarily, but it strikes me that perhaps the teams that are most successful may be the ones that best understand how to incorporate the times we're in right now into true teamwork, brotherhood, and everyone in it together. So I'm sorry if those two were kind of long-winded. I just wanted to use those specific examples. Yeah, I, I do agree that uh, sometimes when you share real life moments with people uh, and show them uh, you're, you're human and, and maybe you've experienced some of the same things they've experienced or will experience, uh, it does you know, bring it to another level when it comes to understanding and empathizing with that person. So hopefully that was the case with our players and that's, that's what I wanted them to understand. That, you know, I, I know some of our players have, have, have experienced something similar. I mean, I've heard some of them talk about it. So, uh, but I, I wanted them to know that we, we're standing with them. And I totally agree that, Kim, some, some teams will handle this better than others, just like some teams will handle this virtual offseason better than others. And it's going to be an indicator of what will happen in the 2020 season. Uh, you know, none of us knows what direction that will go, but – we're going to do all we can in Buffalo to make sure that we keep the lines of communication open with our players because we think that that dialogue is important and we don't want to fracture our team behind some of the things that are going on in our country today. And the only way you can do that is what we talked about earlier, being able to educate ourselves, make sure we're doing a good job of communicating as a coaching staff with our players and vice versa. Putting some action behind our talk, you know, getting out and, getting involved and not just standing back and pointing out all the problems that there are. Uh, we, we have a responsibility to, to get involved. And, um, and so I hope, I hope I answered the question. You did, if I may, the briefest follow-up. Do you ever have to remind yourself football and now real life stuff that Tremaine Edmonds is as young as he is? He's, he's, to me, he's just so, so impressive in so many ways. I totally agree. I mean, when you look at the fact that He's just going to his third season and, you know, just turning 22, so young, with so much promise ahead of him. And he's achieved so much already. I mean, to already be recognized as one of our leaders on our team and on our defense. Uh, and we're very, very fortunate to have him. Uh, I mean, he's the epitome of what you would want your, one of your star players to be, one of your leaders to be. A guy you don't have to worry about late at night. You know he's going to be where he's supposed to be. You know he's going to do what he's supposed to do when it comes to football. Uh, we're just very, very fortunate to have him as a star player for the Buffalo Bills, for sure. Thank you so much, Leslie. I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you. Thanks, Kim. Oh, okay, I guess I'm next. <laughs> hey, Leslie, it's Heather Prusak here again. I wanted to ask you um, about Trey White and just – um, you know, each season that he's been in the NFL, he just continues to take his game to another level. I mean, we saw that last year um, ending, you know, tied with the most interceptions in the league. Um, just kind of what are your expectations for Trey, um, you know, as he continues to take his game to another level each year? Yeah. Well, one of the expectations is that he leads the league this time in interceptions. Uh, all those ball drills we do with him. So, uh, but no, just to see his growth, I mean, I mean, I mean, the people on this call know how much we rely on today to help our defense play well. You are 
a rookie like he was a few years ago, and we're matching you up as a rookie. That shows you the kind of confidence that we have in you, but it also shows the type of person and athlete that he is. Had a kind of toughness as a rookie to be able to go out and do what he did and then continue to grow and stack good years on top of another good year. Uh, I take my hat off to him. There's nobody that works in the heart of heaven that he does. I mean, he puts the time in in the classroom, and he busts his tail in the meeting rooms. And then he goes on the field and practices like it's a game. So I'm not surprised that he's grown uh, as a player the way he has and looking forward to 2020 as he continues to mature and grow as a player and uh, I expect him to just be even better in 2020. Thanks, Leslie. Hi, Leslie. Jenna Cottrell out of Rochester. Thank you for doing this. Um, just the quick question, you know, Sean was talking to us yesterday about how he thinks the team itself can be an example of, you know, many different people all working together, um, so many different backgrounds being represented. And I wanted to know how you thought the Bills could be a, a picture of leading and just fitting into the framework and the context of what's going on in the country. Yeah, you know, we, we have so many high character guys, you know, on our, on our team that you like to believe that we can be in the forefront of showing the rest of the league, even our, even our country. And I know Sean has referenced this with our team. This is what it looks like when you work together uh, to see change happen, still win football games. And, you, know, you, can, you can believe that and say that because of the type of people that we have on our team. We have talented guys, a lot of talented guys that are really good people as well. And now it's a matter of rolling up our sleeves and, and going out and, and, and getting involved and putting some action behind the things that we believe. And I think that'll be the case. But there's no question in our minds that we can be one of those teams that people look to and say, that group of guys, they help turn things around in the community and, 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 and for sure in, a, in, a, in that particular city, for sure. 